Batman is like DC's favorite child, getting more movies, more video games, and far more comic books than any other side of the DC Universe, and over the years Batman has gained a lot more allies than any other character in the DC Universe as well, from some iconic and widely known characters like Robin and Batgirl to some lesser known characters like Azrael and Batwing, together they form the Bat Family, and looking at the huge amount of characters who are a part of the Bat Family, it got me thinking if you could build an entire cinematic universe out of just these characters. So imagine a world where in the 90s DC went along with Marvel in selling their rights to their biggest characters to different studios, and in a Spider-Man Sony type situation, Batman's rights were sold to Disney, and Disney ended up actually doing something with the IP, going on to create basically a Batman monopoly on the comic book movie genre with the Batman Cinematic Universe. This video will be inspired by the structure of the MCU, but won't be exactly the same, and this includes Phase 1 and Phase 3, and it's just Phase 2 that has the exact same structure. Structure. Phase 1 will include an entire Batman trilogy in just one phase, and will begin a couple years prior. So with all that out of the way, let's see what a Batman cinematic universe without any other non-Batman character can look like. I considered starting the universe off in the middle of Batman's career, say after Jason Todd's death, because I think that opens up the storytelling possibilities immensely, and then you don't have to worry about the exact ages of characters like Dick, Barbara, and Jason. Since everything happened in the past, you don't need to see like a 12 year old Robin. But no, considering we have an entire cinematic universe dedicated to just this, I think we could safely build up the Bat Family completely from scratch. I'd start the universe off a bit earlier in order to fit in an entire Batman trilogy into Phase 1, and we'll start with a Batman origin story, it just so happens that there was a origin story movie released around this time, that being Batman Begins, and this movie could be very similar, in fact I think Batman Begins is a perfect title for the beginning of a Batman cinematic universe, so Batman Begins it is. The movie would be released in 2005, Christian Bale would be this universe's Batman and stick around far longer as Batman, but the movie would have some changes. There would be a far more fantastical version of Rachel Ghoul with the Lazarus Pit and coming back to life and all those things. I would also completely replace Rachel Dawes with Talia Al Ghul as the main love interest. For one, Rachel Dawes doesn't exist in the comics and she wouldn't be in the cinematic universe, but also Talia Al Ghul being the main love interest here will come back like at the end of this universe. Aside from all that, however, everything else can be practically the same as Batman Begins with Rachel Ghoul and Scarecrow and Christian Bale. Batman, and also the release schedule of the trilogy will be very similar as the next movie will be in 2008, but it will not be The Dark Knight. In fact, it'd be like a combination of The Dark Knight and The Batman, both of which take a lot of elements from the long Halloween, and this movie would take elements from both movies. The Riddler would be used in the exact same way he was used in The Batman, so he would be the main villain. Catwoman would be introduced in the same way she was introduced in The Batman movie, however, being played by Anne Hathaway, as she's the actress who played Selina Kyle the closest to the release of this movie. The movie would still be a similar murder mystery detective investigation like it was with The Batman, but this time the investigation also involves Harvey Dent, like it did in The Dark Knight. He goes through the exact same story that he did in The Dark Knight, which is even better than his story in The Long Halloween. And then I'd end this movie with Selina Kyle leaving Gotham like she did in The Batman, and an end credit scene where Bruce goes to the circus. Circus, teasing, well, you know. In 2010, we'd have a movie that is the equivalent to The Incredible Hulk in that it doesn't have any sequels and is completely standalone, that being Catwoman. There was a Catwoman movie released in the 2000s, but this movie will be completely different. Firstly, it will actually focus on a character named Selina Kyle, and it'd be mostly based off of the story Catwoman Anodyne, where Selina saves her friend Holly Robinson from a human trafficking ring. I'd have Mr. Zaz as the main villain, as I think he'd fit, and basically in this movie, Selina, who was introduced in the second Batman movie, would go from villain or maybe anti-hero like she was in the Batman movie, to a straight-up hero, as she saves a whole group of people who are in a human trafficking ring. In 2011, the Bat Family would start to expand a bit with the release of Batgirl, a movie that would showcase Batgirl's origin story, mostly inspired by Batgirl Year One, and would feature both Killer Moth as a minor villain and Firefly as the main villain. Honestly, that's just because that's what they were going to do with the Batgirl movie that never got released. Now, Robin hasn't appeared yet, but Batgirl wouldn't technically predate Robin, as his origin story, as we already know, began a couple years prior in 2008, and by now he's already been Robin for two 
two years. He's also referenced a lot in this movie as well, we just haven't seen him yet, but we will right now. Coming a year prior to when The Dark Knight Rises actually released would be a movie called Batman and Robin, which would be the only ever movie with that title, as in this weird and potentially better universe, Batman Forever did even worse, and it was around that time that DC sold the movie rights, meaning that Batman and Robin never got made in 1997. This movie would basically be exactly what I want the Batman sequel to be, introduce Robin and have Mr. Freeze as the villain, mostly inspired by by Batman Dark Victory slash Robin Year One, as well as the iconic Batman the Animated Series episode Heart of Ice. Dick Grayson's timeline looks something like this, he was orphaned in 2008 at the age of 12 and began training around that time. He debuted as Robin at the age of 13 in 2009 and now at 15 years old, is already a semi-experienced vigilante. These ages are important to allow him to become Nightwing not too late in the universe at the age of 18 in Phase 2, but also he was Robin as a child, like in the comics. We kind of got our cake and ate it too here, as I think seeing an actual 12 year old as Robin would be a bit weird, but now at 15, I think it's a bit more reasonable. He's basically the same age that Spider Man was in his first appearance in the MCU. The Avengers style team up of this cinematic universe would be much smaller in scale, but still come out in 2012. The movie would be called Gotham Knights without Batman in the title at all, because DC has proven three times over already that they consider Gotham just by itself without Batman or even the word bat, a big enough IP as we got the TV show Gotham, the video game Gotham Knights, and the upcoming TV show Gotham Knights, and I think Bat Family wouldn't really work as a title, so these movies will be called Gotham Knights and the team in universe would be called Gotham Knights, except by each other, they call each other the Bat Family. The team wouldn't be especially large, there's just Batman and Robin who have met before, as well as Catwoman and Batgirl, the latter of whom is the only character to have never met any of the others prior to this, and you can already see maybe like a pairing off of Batman and Catwoman as well as Robin and Batgirl, and that being a large focus of the movie. The movie would feature the Court of Owls and the Lincoln March aka Owlman as the main villains, so basically the Court of Owls slash City of Owls storylines, which granted came out like a year prior to the release of this this movie, but this is an alternate universe, so I think storylines that are that close to the release and also technically came out before are still uh, usable for these movies. We start off Phase 2 in 2013 with a movie called Batman the Caped Crusader, which is based off of Batman and the Monster Men, alongside an episode of Batman the Animated Series known as Old Wounds, as it will begin to set Robin down the path to become Nightwing, as the movie begins with a disagreement between Batman and Robin similar to that episode, and rather early on into the movie, Dick leaves Gotham City, which means we really only got two movies with the Dick race and Robin before he goes off to become Nightwing. Aside from that, however, the movie will be mostly based off of Batman and the Monster Men, which will introduce Batman to some superpowered threats like Man Bat, Clayface, and Killer Croc, all of whom lead back to and were created by the main villain, Hugo Strange. On top of that, after Dick leaves, Jason Todd is introduced and by the end of the movie becomes Robin. So we didn't actually see Dick Grayson becoming Robin in Phase 1. This movie will feature a character actually becoming Robin since we haven't actually seen that before, and you might notice that Dick Grayson was the Robin of Phase 1, Jason Todd is the Robin of Phase 2, and the Robin of Phase 3 is yet to be seen. The second Batgirl movie, an equivalent to Thor The Dark World, will be Batgirl Wanted, or at least that's the working title, and it'd be about James Gordon thinking that Batgirl killed his son, James Gordon Jr., and he ends up hunting her down, not knowing that she's his daughter. There's a comic with the same title and story, and it came out around the same time, like in 2014, but I think that the writers of the movie can come up with the concept on their own. It's very similar to an episode of Batman the Animated Series called Over the Edge, so it's not entirely impossible that they could come up with the story. In the end, however, it would be revealed that James Gordon Jr. actually faked his own death, and he ends up being the main villain of the movie, because if you don't know, Batgirl's brother is a straight-up psychopath serial killer in the comics. 
In 2014, the equivalent to Captain America the Winter Soldier would be Nightwing. Now, the first Captain America movie wasn't technically a Nightwing movie since Dick Grayson wasn't Nightwing yet, but honestly, writing this now, I'm just gonna decide that that movie was told from Dick Grayson's perspective and he was the main character. So, even though it was also a Batman movie, the Captain America trilogy equivalent would be a Dick Grayson trilogy, and this movie solidifies Dick Grayson alongside Batman and Batgirl as the Trinity of this saga. This movie would be the follow-up to the last Batman movie in which Batman and Robin's relationship fractured, Dick Grayson is no longer Robin and has quit vigilanteism, and he's been recruited to an agency called Spiral, now at 18 years old. This is based off of a story called Grayson, which he did the same thing, but also in that story he meets a character named Helena Bertinelli. Helena Bertinelli would be a member of the agency, which is an agency that they quickly learn is very corrupt and is mostly on the payroll of Blockbuster. Blockbuster Buster would then be revealed to be the man who killed both Helena Bertinelli's parents and also Dick Grayson's parents, so the two of them become vigilantes, Dick Grayson returning to vigilantism as Nightwing and Huntress to take Blockbuster down, which I think is a great way to introduce both Nightwing and the Huntress, both very important members of the Bat Family. Finding the equivalent to the Guardians of the Galaxy was no easy task, since you both have to have a secondary team to the Bat Family, which is close enough to Batman that the studio would have the rights to it, but also not too close to Batman that it's not just basically more Bat Family. I considered a couple options like maybe the Suicide Squad, since a lot of its members are Batman villains, but decided that that's its own thing and they wouldn't have the rights to Amanda Waller or even the name Suicide Squad, so that isn't a possibility. Maybe the Birds of Prey, but without Black Canary and and we also need to give Batgirl her own trilogy, if nothing else because of her name recognition. Plus, I just introduced Huntress in the Nightwing movie, so yeah, the Birds of Prey was a non-starter. The best choice is actually pretty obvious, it's the Outsiders. The Outsiders were a group of heroes led and created by, wouldn't you know it, Batman, who were supposed to be outside of the Justice League, hence the name. The main members are Metamorpho, Black Lightning, Katana, Geoforce, Halo, and the leader, Batman. And honestly, I think the studio should have the rights to these characters. This group was created in a Batman comic book. The comic was always then named Batman and the Outsiders, so they wouldn't really exist outside of the realm of Batman. That being said, there are a couple characters that do exist outside of the realm of the Outsiders, like Black Lightning and Metamorpho, who were created before the team's existence, so they are off limits. But characters like Geoforce and Katana and Halo and a lot of others were all created for the Outsiders, so they are allowed. So with all that in mind, knowing the characters that are allowed, the team I'd go with is Geoforce, Katana, Halo, Freight Train, and the leader would actually be Jean-Paul Valley, aka Azrael. Azrael, I think, is a big enough character to have his own movie, but there was no place for him in the saga, and he has been a member of this team before. You don't actually have to have the same team, it's just that without Black Lightning and Metamorpho, the team's heavy hitters aren't really there anymore, so I think it needs something like Azrael. These movies would wouldn't take place in Gotham and wouldn't get to Gotham until the Infinity War equivalent, and so they could face the more international Batman villains like the KG Beast who would be the main villain of this one. Then there's the Age of Ultron equivalent, this movie comes out in 2015, and it's called Gotham Knights The Man Who Laughs. The team now consists of Batman, Nightwing, Batgirl, Catwoman, Huntress, and Jason Todd, and obviously is still smaller than the Avengers, but it's the same size as the first Avengers movie. Considering the smaller scale, it makes sense. The main villain is obviously the Joker, alongside Harley Quinn and the Joker Gang, and the movie takes inspiration from all the big Joker stories involving the Bat Family. Family, those being a death in the family, the killing joke, and death of the family. Now, Barbara Gordon wouldn't get paralyzed, there is still another Batgirl movie in the trilogy, but killing joke elements will lead you to thinking that she will, so then when a familiar element begins to occur with Jason Todd, you aren't as sure as you might have been. But I will in fact kill off Jason, which will lead to a pretty obvious Phase 3 movie. As for the Joker, this would be a situation similar to the Batman, where Batman has faced him before, we just haven't seen it on screen. Do I believe that they would go 10 years without actually introducing the Joker on screen? No, but I think that's what fits the best for this universe, so that's what I'm going with. Also, we will see Joker again, but there won't be an oversaturation of Joker, as honestly in real life I feel like there is. 
The equivalent of Ant-Man and the last movie in Phase 2 will be Batwoman. This movie could be a condensed and much better version of Batwoman Season 1, showcasing her origin story and having Alice as the main villain. This will begin an Alice in Wonderland theme for the Batwoman trilogy, involving villains like Alice, the Mad Hatter, Cheshire, and White Rabbit. Phase 3 will be very differently structured than the MCU, for instance Phase 3 basically begins with an Avengers movie in Civil War, while this phase starts off much smaller in what is almost a Batman movie. This movie coming out in 2016 will be Red Robin and will have Tim Drake as the main character. The movie takes inspiration from his introduction story Batman A Lonely Place of Dying, in which, or at least in this movie, after Jason Todd's death, Batman hasn't really showed up much in Gotham. And the rest of the Bat family are present, but they don't really inspire fear like Batman does, so villains become a bit more daring. Tim deduces Batman's identity and tries to bring him back, but fails to do so, and instead he steals Jason's Robin suit and becomes Robin, even though Batman would never allow it. He becomes Robin to stop a villain named Anarchy, who's been terrorizing a very small part of Gotham, the one that he lives in, and by the end of the movie, Batman does return, thanks to Tim Drake, but refuses to allow Tim to be Robin. Instead, Tim creates a new mantle, Red Robin. The next movie would be Nightwing vs. Deathstroke. Again, it's a working title, but the movie would be mostly inspired by Teen Titans' The Judas Contract, just without any of the Teen Titans aside from Dick Grayson. In this movie, Dick would meet a new vigilante named Flamebird, also known as Betty Kane, and the two would fall in love. Betty Kane is a hero in the comics, so people wouldn't exactly expect it when it's revealed that she's actually been working for Deathstroke and is the substitute for Terra in this story. Deathstroke sent her to learn Nightwing about Batman's identity and their weaknesses in order to get his revenge, because the same thing that happened in the comics, he basically thinks that they killed his son. Basically, yeah, it's a bare bones, stripped down version of the Judas Contract without any of the Teen Titans or Terra, just Nightwing and Deathstroke plus Betty Kane. Deathstroke then doesn't go after Batman, as Nightwing does manage to prove to him how his son died, which is that he overdosed on the drugs that gave him superpowers that he got from an organization that in the comics is Hive, while well, here, well, we will find out. This will lead into a Deathstroke movie in this very phase. We'll get to that in a bit. 2017 would see the release of The Outsiders 2, or Volume 2, if also directed by James Gunn. The movie could add a couple members, like Looker and Windfall. I did consider Grace Troy, but she's got like Amazonian elements to her, and I think that prohibits her usage. I'd use some truly out there villains, villains that we'd never see anywhere else before, like Catman and Copperhead, but also The Outsiders have been tracking down the operations of a man known as Bane, which by the end of this movie leads them to Gotham City. So after a Enough time has passed, and Tim Drake has been introduced, and Jason Todd would now be around 18 years old, we'd get Batman Under the Red Hood. Not exactly the equivalent to Civil War, but it would include a lot of other Bat Family members, mainly Nightwing, Batgirl, and Catwoman in smallish roles, and Tim Drake in a very large role which is to be the main subject of one of Jason's motivations. There's Why Didn't You Look For Me, which Arkham Knight did very well. There's How Could You Not Kill the Joker, which the animated movie did perfectly. But then there's also How Could You Replace Me So Quickly, that neither adaptation really did anything with. And also there's the Titans version that really didn't do anything well. This movie would use all of those motivations as an expanded live-action version of the animated movie, which sadly wouldn't exist in this alternate universe, but we'd have this instead. We'd see Joker again in this movie, used in the same way he was used in the actual story, but maybe Jason could actually kill him, because that could be a very impactful moment, but it would mean that we never see him again. Either way, Joker would not have really any role in the saga going forward, so I'd go either way. The movie ends with Jason going off to potentially be led down a path of redemption, and we will see that in the Infinity War and Endgame equivalents, and while I won't go over the next saga, he could definitely get his own movie or TV show in the next saga and next phase. Expanding past the hand-to-hand -hand combat style that all these movies have, aside from The Outsiders, is a movie about Batwing, who basically has an Iron Man suit, which would be very unique for the universe and quite possibly refreshing for audiences. This movie would focus on the more popular Batwing, that being Luke Fox, and the original David Zavimbe, he would appear, he would die, and pass on the mantle to Luke Fox. The other members of Luke's family would all appear, including Lucius, who already appeared all the way back in the first movie, as well as his brother 
Professor Jace, who in the comics becomes Batman at one point, but that wouldn't happen until 2021 in real life, so that wouldn't happen in this saga, that is for sure. The main villain could be a, maybe the calculator, somebody who has some sort of technological prowess who could maybe build a suit of his own. The final Batgirl movie in the trilogy would be released in 2018 and be called Batgirls. The other Batgirls haven't been introduced yet, but I think we could introduce both of them in the same movie because they have very similar backstories. Both Cassandra Cain and Stephanie Brown were raised by villains. Cassandra Cain's father is David Cain and mother Lady Shiva, while Stephanie Brown's father is Clue Master. I think that what we could do here is that Stephanie Brown would, at the beginning of this movie, be fully independent of her villainous father, while the movie revolves around Cassandra Kane trying to get away from her parents, so Stephanie can act like a mentor figure to her while Barbara acts like a mentor figure to both. Lady Shiva and David Kane would be the main villains and they are both very very big threats, and by the end of the movie, Stephanie Brown is spoiler, Cassandra Kane is orphan, but down the line she will become Batgirl because eventually Barbara Gordon will become Oracle. The second Batwoman movie will continue the Alice in Wonderland theme and actually be called Batwoman Wonderland, which is actually a story from the comics, and also Mad Hatter would be the main villain. I would also include a Bat family member or two, like Catwoman and or Huntress, since for one, I don't want Batwoman to meet the other Bat family members in Gotham Knights, but also Catwoman and Huntress don't really have much to do in this saga, so let's include them in this movie, why not? We have like two fully female superhero movies in a row here here. That could be very controversial, but I don't care. That brings us to the Infinity War equivalent, which will be called Gotham Knights Cataclysm, and have its inspiration firmly rooted in the 90s, which is also the case for Infinity War. There are two main inspirations here. There's Batman Nightfall, which is what I was going to call this movie, but the Gotham Knights Nightfall having a double knight in there sounded a bit weird. The story which introduces Bane and was about Bane causing a breakout in Arkham Asylum, which leads to Batman fighting villains all night, before coming home to find Bane in Wayne Manor. Bane discovered Batman's identity and then easily defeats the exhausted vigilante and breaks his back, which puts him out of commission for a while. Then there's Cataclysm and its follow-up No Man's Land, where an earthquake causes Gotham to become basically a place of anarchy and the US declares it completely separate territory or a No Man's Land. Combining these two stories I thought would be a great Infinity War equivalent for the saga, which by the way I'd call the Dark Knight Saga. However, after I put this together and consider like what would be a great ending to the first movie where the Bat Family are at their lowest point, and then Gotham City would have to be in a terrible place where they need to save it from in the next movie, and ooh, Bane would be be a great equivalent for Thanos, so maybe Nightfall and No Man's Land combined would be a great ending here, but then I realized something. I was not the first to think of that, in fact, maybe I subconsciously got the idea from a movie called The Dark Knight Rises, which is like the same exact plot. Bane is the main villain, he breaks Batman's back so the Nightfall things are there, he takes over Gotham City and makes it a no man's land and it's complete anarchy, the government can't enter it, so no man's land is there. I completely subconsciously came up with The Dark Knight Rises, but this is going to be a much better version of The Dark Knight Rises, a much longer and bigger and Bat family and less realistic version of The Dark Knight Rises. The story would be very similar to Nightfall, but with the entire Bat family fighting the villains, and near the third act it ends with Batman's back being broken, which does put him out of commission for a while. I wouldn't have Azrael become Batman because he has his own thing with the Outsiders. Instead, nobody becomes Batman, and Gotham is left Batman man lists in the gap between this movie and the next one, but also, Bane causes the earthquake, either using an Arrow Season 1 style earthquake device, or maybe, which I like a lot more, he manipulates Geoforce into creating the earthquake that causes the cataclysm that causes the No Man's Land. And then something similar to The Dark Knight Rises happens where Bane takes over Gotham City. Some heroes would die, namely Geoforce who causes the earthquake and the Huntress, and there is a reason for that. And while Batman gets his back broken, Barbara Gordon is completely paralyzed from the waist down because of the earthquake, which is where she becomes Oracle, and then Cassandra becomes Batgirl. This is The Dark Knight Saga's snap moment. The Bat family in Gotham City is at its lowest point, and the villain has won but they won't be the winner forever. 
This placement was originally going to be a Red Hood movie and was also originally going to be before Cataclysm, but I decided that not enough time passed after the Under the Red Hood movie, so instead I went with a character who doesn't need to appear in Cataclysm and ended up giving Deathstroke a much larger role than I expected in this saga, and I pushed this movie between Cataclysm and the Endgame equivalent, but it makes sense. Deathstroke is very popular, enough to have his own ongoing series and supporting cast, so having a Nightwing movie where he's the main villain followed by his own movie series, it makes sense. This movie would come out in 2019 and basically would be exactly what the previous one promised. Slade goes after the organization that killed his son, in the comics it's Hive, but I don't think the studio would have the rights to it, so instead I'd go with Leviathan, but instead of Talia al Ghul, it would be led by Nissa Ratko, which connects back to the League of Assassins, and the reason that Grant Wilson went after Batman in the first place. Oh, and also Deadshot will be hired by this organization, so he would have like a lot of the action scenes, but Nissa would be the main villain, Ravager or Rose Wilson would be introduced as well, and both characters will be a part of the endgame equivalent, as Slade believes he owes Dick Grayson a favor. The Endgame equivalent will be called Batman The Dark Knight Returns and would take place after a single year time jump, but Batman has not fully recovered. He has recovered a bit, but not fully. Some of the Gotham Knights are still imprisoned by Bane, and a ragtag group of the remaining heroes come up with a plan. Batman builds a mech suit to help him stand, one that either looks similar to the Kingdom Come design, or probably more so the Dark Knight Returns design, which is also the title of this movie, which you may know notice was in Gotham Knights The Dark Knight Returns, it's Batman The Dark Knight Returns. This was on purpose, because while all of the Gotham Knights are in this movie, at least the ones that are still alive, plus like Deathstroke helps them out, and there is a big Gotham Knights showdown like the endgame portal scene where Batman's fighting Bane and also all of the other villains are there, but then all the Gotham Knights show up and then there's a big war showdown that goes on, that all happens. However, the movie is told like almost 100% from Bruce Wayne's perspective, he is unequivocally the main character, and also Batman The Dark Knight Returns is an iconic title. The movie would also end in Batman's death, not on a big cosmic sacrifice like Iron Man in Endgame or even Batman in Final Crisis, instead it's a much more personal fight. He dies alongside Bane. As they fight in a collapsing building, and while Bane tries to escape, Batman prevents him from doing so, the building collapses on both of them, and they die. Oh, and also, at the beginning of the movie, it'd be revealed that Bruce and Selina have a baby together that was born a couple months prior, a daughter named Helena, which is really the main reason I killed off Helena Bertinelli in the previous movie. For one, she wasn't really doing much in this saga, but also this is the perfect time for Bruce and Selina to have a daughter, and for that to be the future Huntress. Helena Wayne. And finally, the saga ends with a movie called Nightwing Batman Reborn and would take inspiration from a few stories. There's the Batman Battle for the Cowl story, which is where they fight over the mantle of Batman after Batman seemingly died in Final Crisis, and ends with Dick Grayson taking over the mantle. There's also Batman and Son, which showcases Damian Wade's origin story, and Batman and Robin Batman Reborn, which is the first story with Dick as Batman, but also Damian Wayne is his Robin. This movie won't show the Bat family fighting over the mantle, instead nobody really wants to be Batman, it's seen more as a burden, but then also Dick is the clear choice. So Dick deals with that throughout the movie and then becomes Batman at the end, all while dealing with a bomb dropped on him by Talia al Ghul, that she and Bruce have a 13 year old son. This connects back to the first movie in the saga, which is also revealed to be when Damian Wayne was conceived. Talia al Ghul alongside Damian's clone Heretic are the main villains, which also brings the Dark Knight saga full circle, starting and ending with an Al Ghul as the main villain, and also kind of starting and ending with Damian Wayne. So that is it for this video, if you were wondering about the ages of each character, I'll put it on screen here, but only for the characters whose age matters, so like Bruce Wayne, but also really mostly just the kids. But that's it for this video, proving you can make a cinematic universe out of just the Bat Family, so Warner Brothers is no excuse. Please, James Gunn, make a good DC cinematic universe. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, goodbye.